Today I want to show you how I go about my maintenance routine with my orchids. And because <laughs> it's not that easy to see on the little ones, we're going to take out a monster also to do an update on my CG Roebling. The fact that she is such a big orchid, it's going to be easier to see what I do, what steps I undertake, and I do this with all my orchids, from the teeny tiny to the XXL like she is. But in order to get her out, I have to remove several orchids, shuffle a little bit, and then I appreciate the fact that you're joining me for a little bit of a primp and preen, and I hope that you pick up some tips, as well as the reasons why I do what I do. Come here, you big girl. Ooh, goodness me. <laughs> big orchid. There we go, CG Roebling. Now, before I even do anything else, I look at the orchid from every angle. Before I even wipe the leaves, I want to see if there's been any pest infestation. You will see a lot of marks and blotches on this orchid, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. It is probably a virus orchid because of all the different symptoms and signals that this orchid is giving me, especially the deformed blooms in the past blooming seasons, plural. So never mind, needless to say, she's still on the patio. But the first thing I do is I really look at all the structures under the leaves, everywhere where there could be a pest. And then, of course, I do discover some because that is the name of the game, especially if an orchid is on the brink of weakness. And these are the main targets. I look at the rhizome and I admire the beautiful new growths because she's still trying. So I look at every single nook and cranny. Only then do I start to wipe the leaves. And ideally, like on a day like this, you can see the sun coming in and out. It is breezy. It is cloudy on and off. It's a great day to be doing this kind of maintenance with orchids because, well, A, the breeze is going to dry everything out nicely. And B, we're not going to be burning the leaves. Now, because this orchid is virused also, something to keep in mind when you maintain or do maintenance on an orchid, something to keep in mind is that you afterwards do not use the same cloth on any other orchid. This rag is now going to go into bleach after I've finished with her, and then, only then, will I then put it in the washing machine as well on a hot cycle, and only then will I be able to use it for my orchids in the future. So that's one thing. Make sure, even if you've got pests on your orchids, it doesn't matter if you're going with one rag to another orchid because you're dealing with the pests as you're wiping the leaves down. That's not the problem. The problem is if there's any infection, anything suspicious you might see, you don't want to be using the same rag repeatedly on other orchids. So I haven't done the underside of the leaves yet, but that's what I'm doing next. Seeing as we did see some pests, underside of the leaves are dealt with. On Cattleya orchids, during the day, that is when their stomata are closed. That is when it's not a problem to wipe the underside of the leaves. These are not the orchids that you deal with when you do maintenance. You don't deal with them late afternoon, early evening, because they open their stomatas, and we don't want to clog the stomatas in the back. The orchid still needs to have breathing capacity, let's put it that way. Fine leafed orchids. Those are the ones you do early, early morning or late afternoon, early evening, because that is when they close their stomatas for the night. So fine leaved orchids have their stomata open during the day and thick cuticle orchids like Cattleya's phalaenopsis and the like, they have their stomatas open at night. It is their way of conserving energy, loss of transpiration, etc. So. Now that we have done that, I am going to take the orchid out of her mask. Oh, it's icky and gross. And that is another thing I do when I deal with the big ones, my top guns as I like to call them. I clean out the masks. <laughs> If the sun is shining too much and no other cloud cover is anticipated, it's best to go in the shade for the pest prevention measures. And it is at this point that I flush thoroughly. 
Now, the big orchids don't get a flush once a week because I'm trying to be very resourceful with my RO water. You can see how much water is going into that pot. It takes oh, probably 10 liters for a proper flush. And if I did that once a week, that would be an astonishing amount of waste. Seeing as I'm not doing it once a week, maybe I do this two times per month, I am even more generous, more liberal with the flushing because it's not that often. And that goes for all the orchids that are in these big pots, no matter if they're virused or not. I just have to be a little bit more respectful of my resources. All the way to the top of the media, pot permitting and flushing pace permitting. There, this bucket is empty. <laughs> oh goody, we've got some shade. If what you're seeing here, hearing here has inspired you, has been helpful, please give this video a like. I would so appreciate it. It helps the channel. And if you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Thank you so much for doing both. I so appreciate that support as well as you watching. It doesn't hurt to do this. Nobody will see it because the pot is going back in the mask, but I am the kind of person, even though there's a bit of furniture standing on the floor, I need to get underneath that furniture and clean there as well. <laughs> even though nobody's ever going to be there, but I know it's clean. <laughs> Ta-da! Blinded by the light. <laughs> That's better. Now, into the mask she goes, like that. You'd think we were done now? Not quite. Now we get to put fresh fertilizer in here. Active growth, big orchid. I've got 500 parts per million of a well-balanced orchid fertilizer in here. Big pot, that would be one and a half liters. That would be about three liters going in because the mask itself also has the reservoir. So let's have a look, see if we've got that right. Uh, it's still draining, but yes, it's gonna be absolutely fine. That ant will find its way out. Okay, the next step is something that I absolutely advocate for. This is, well, in my case now, I have to treat for pests because we saw pests, but the last step for me is very, very important. It is the pest prevention. Whether the orchid has had signs of pests or not, pest prevention is paramount. Now, I did mention I have a sunny, cloudy day, lots of breeze. So my garlic alcohol, the evaporative cooling effect of this garlic alcohol will not adversely affect my orchid. If it was a sunny, warm day, I would be doing this in the shade. Okay, so highly recommend that you mist down your orchid with whatever product that you use as preventative measures for pests and get into the folds and the crannies with whatever product you have, just a little bit more focus and concentration there. My CG Roebling always likes to attract scale that is in the leaf joints. So that's where I go in a little bit more. and just leave a little pool in there, including the back of the leaves, because that's where we did see some cretons. So back of the leaves, again, the stomata are closed. Keep that always in mind. And also, muy importante, I shall repeat, in the shade, if you're doing this on a sunny day, you do not want to adversely affect your foliage, the structures of the orchid, with garlic alcohol, it's evaporative cooling when the alcohol evaporates, okay? So I'm just checking to make sure that another cloud is coming because if I have to, we will move into the shade for the next step because that is still a continuation of pest prevention and everything that could happen at the base of the orchid. Now, I say I do this with every orchid, starting with these size pots two times a month at a minimum because of my resources. Of course, that means with the amount of large orchids I have, I do them in turn. So I have this orchid today, another large orchid tomorrow, and so on and so forth. So at least they're all getting a rotation. I have set alarms 
onto my phone this year because I was getting a little too complacent. I was trusting the product a little bit too much. The aggression of the scale on weak orchids is not to be underestimated. Now, if I'm not entirely sure that I've gotten into every nook and cranny at the rhizome, I do go in with a paintbrush, also saturated with garlic alcohol, and I go down and paint everything that I can see or can't see, let's put it that way. Everything that is tight and hard to access. But usually, because it's a breezy day, I can be relatively liberal with my garlic alcohol, and I got into the rhizome really well. Now, the advantage here, if you have an orchid that is growing new roots, and you're uncertain about the alcohol doing damage to the velamen, cover them with your hand, or put a paper towel, or don't even go in with the sprayer. Just use a paintbrush, saturate the paintbrush, and then paint, and you will avoid any kind of possible damage to the velamen. Personally, I have not seen that ever happen in my history of, hmm, we're into the third year of me using garlic alcohol. I have not seen damage to velamen, but there's a little niggle in the back of my mind that says there is evaporation happening. Alcohol also desiccates things. So just to be on the safe side, and because I'm not going to experiment as to whether it happens or not by possibly compromising roots, <laughs> caution is key, and the result is the same. And that is it, my quick guide to my orchid maintenance routine from XXL all the way to the itty bitty tiny ones, I do exactly the same. At least here, we could see what was going on instead of going in with a microscope and big chubby hands and a rag, and you see nothing but chubby hands and a rag. I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, if you have any other tips and suggestions that you might want to add to orchid maintenance in general, leave those in the comments. Know that I appreciate any additional information you provide, and so will anybody looking for further information when they read the comments section. Have yourself a wonderful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.